adding volumetric fog to a scene is a great way to give it a dramatic atmospheric feel that I'm honestly a huge fan of. So today I wanted to go over how to create and composite atmospheric fog all inside of After Effects with no stock footage or plugins needed. The root of the effect comes down to turbulent noise. By animating the offset and evolution, we're able to create a sort of fog-like look, but the real power comes from setting the blend mode to screen and stacking multiple fog layers on top of each other while masking out parts of your scene as they get further away. That, coupled with enhancements like glows, color grading, and compound blur can really help sell the look of volumetric fog. To show you the steps a little easier, I'm just going to take a still frame from this footage to work on, and then afterwards I'll show you how to apply what we do to a video. The first thing we need to do is create our base fog layer, so let's create a new solid and apply the turbulent noise effect to it. Now to get it moving a bit, we'll twirl down the transform and holding Alt or Option on a Mac, we'll click the stopwatch next to offset turbulence so that we can write a super easy expression to make it animate for us without needing to make any keyframes. To make it move slowly to the right, we'll open up some square brackets and type in value 0 plus time times 25, comma, value 1, and then close the square brackets. This just means we want the x and y value to be whatever the x and y is over here, but we're also adding the composition time times 25 to our x value, which makes it move to the right. Next, we'll just set one last expression to animate the fog's evolution, which is going to be time times 60. You can play around with what you multiply time by on either of these to change the speed, but I found that these are some pretty decent numbers to start with. Next, let's increase the complexity of our noise to about 10 so that our fog has a little bit more detail to it, and then also set the scale to something like 350 so that it feels closer to us. And now we can set our fog layer's blending mode to screen, and there we have it. Looks pretty awful. But like I said earlier, the power of this effect really comes from stacking fog layers to simulate depth in our scene. So, let's set the opacity of this fog layer to 50 and rename it to something like fog level 0. Next, let's duplicate it to create fog level 1 and really get started on creating some volumetric fog. First, we have to change up some values on this layer, like giving it a new seed in the evolution options. This just makes it generate a different pattern than our fog level 0 layer to keep things more organic. Next, we can lower the scale a bit to something like 300 to make it feel a little further away, and now let's get started on our first depth mat. Turning off both of our fog layers, create a new black solid, then toggle the visibility so that we can see what we're working on. Now basically our goal here is to make it black wherever we don't want fog level 1 to be. So for this photo, it's pretty easy to figure out where we'd want to make our different depth mats. The first would be this house in front, the next would include the house on the right, and the last would include the walls of this fort over here. Now obviously footage where we can separate the objects based on distance with clean lines will be the easiest to work on, but don't forget that we can use multiple layers and masks to create our depth mats, so even something like a street that goes into the distance can be done with some mask feathering. Back to our example, I'll just make my way around this house with a pen tool, and then when I'm done, just toggle the visibility back on. Now whether it takes you multiple layers or you can just get it done in one, we have to pre-compose all of the mat layers, or layer, move all attributes, and name it mat level 1. I'll also copy my footage into this comp as well so that if we need to make changes to the mat, we can just turn the footage layer back on and make our changes easily. Next, we have to make everything white where we want fog to exist, so go ahead and create another new solid, make it white, place it above your mat layers, and then set its blending mode to multiply. The reason we're doing it this way, instead of just placing the white solid underneath the matte layers, is so that we have the option to fine-tune where we want fog to show up using a gradient ramp. For example, if we wanted the fog to fade out as it nears the bottom of frame, we could just adjust the gradient like this. White means fog will be there, black means no fog. Now getting rid of that example gradient, I'll just hop back to the main comp, make sure that mat level 1 is above fog level 1, and then set fog level 1's track mat to luma. And make sure that the fog layer is actually visible. Now if I raise the opacity just so we can see a little better, you get the idea of what we're going for. And now to give us a full picture, I'll turn on fog level 0 as well, and then lower the opacity of fog level 1 back down a bit. With those two layers working together, we can see that it's starting to take form a little bit now. After creating a new black solid and masking out the building on the right here, I'll again right click it, pre-compose, name it mat level 2, and hit OK. But this time, I'll head over to mat level 1, copy all the layers inside of it, and then paste them on top of the mat level 2 composition. Now is also a good time to set the mat layers of level 2 to a different color just so that we can tell them apart right away. In mat level 2, I want to include this tree on the left in the mat as well, but trees are really tough to mask out. Luckily for us though, it's framed against a bright background, so there's a good amount of contrast between the sky behind it and the tree itself. To get a much more accurate result, I'm going to go ahead and duplicate the footage and add levels to it. Using the input black, input white, and gamma handles, try to get the tree as black as possible and the sky as white as possible while still keeping as much detail in the tree as you can. After that, we'll just add a hue and saturation and then bring the saturation all the way down so that we have it in black and white. And finally, let's just create a rough mask around what we actually want to keep, and we're golden. We've got a much more accurate mask of the tree than we could have possibly done by hand. 
Now heading back to the main comp, I'll duplicate fog level 1 to create fog level 2, and then place it underneath the matte level 2 layer. Don't forget to change the turbulent noise seed to randomize the pattern, set the scale a little bit smaller in the transform, and this time I'll also set the contrast lower to around 50 since it's getting further from the camera and the fog wisps would be a lot less distinct. Now jumping ahead to matte level 3 where I'm masking out the fort's walls, on the right side of the fort there are a lot of little towers and spike things, so to save time and get a more accurate result we can do the exact same thing we did with the tree. I also noticed that these walls curve backwards away from camera, so in theory the edges would be a little bit foggier than the middle which is closer to us. So a way to tackle that is to create another mask on the same layer and set it to subtract, feather it out a bunch, and also lower the mask's opacity itself to make it a little more subtle. Now after heading back to our main comp, duplicating fog level 2 to make level 3, randomizing the seed and adjusting the opacity of the fog levels, we're left with this. You can see a quick before and after by just duplicating your footage and dragging it to the top, and wow. That looks pretty alright. It's like not amazing, but it's, it's decent, it's somewhere, it's coming along. Well, now is where the color grading and adjustments come in. To get started with that, let's create a new adjustment layer, rename it to Lumetri, and add the Lumetri color effect to it. We're actually going to end up making two Lumetri layers. The first one's going to be to create a new baseline, and the second will use our depth mats, so that the color grading gets stronger the further away objects are in the scene. For this first Lumetri layer, where we're just establishing a new baseline, I'll bring down the temperature of the footage a bit to add some cooler tones to it, which is purely an aesthetic choice. When fog scatters light, it just makes it appear more white, not blue. Next, I'll lower the exposure by about 1, raise the contrast, and then lower both the highlights and the shadows. All this to just get my scene a bit darker, because I think the footage is too bright for an overcast foggy vibe. Now to create our second Lumetri, let's select all of the fog and matte levels, duplicate them with Ctrl or Command D, and then pre-compose them into a new comp called Depth Mat. Then we can duplicate our Lumetri, rename it Depth Lumetri, and place that Depth Mat layer above it. Finally, set the Depth Lumetri's track mat to Luma Mat so that it gets applied based on the brightness of the mat, and therefore gets stronger as the scene gets further away I've recorded this line four times. I'll reset our duplicated Lumetri effect so that we have a clean slate, and then raise both the highlights and the shadows so that it gets brighter and closer to white as the fog gets heavier in the distance. I'll also set the temperature to around negative 20 to make it cooler in the distance, again just for aesthetic reasons, and the last thing we'll do to it is lower the vibrance in the creative tab to around negative 30, because as fog gets thicker, it scatters more and more light, letting us see less color. To fine tune it a little more, we can toggle on the depth matte layer, solo it so we can see it more easily, and then apply the levels effect to it. And now we can fine tune and adjust it however we want. The brighter it is, the stronger the lumetri will be. Okay, next let's create a blur that uses our depth mat to recreate a bit of that haze you get from heavier fog. So just make a new adjustment layer, name it depth blur, and apply the compound blur effect to it. This is basically just a blur that uses a luma mat to figure out what to blur and what not to blur. So we can set the blur layer to the depth mat, and then we can either leave it set to source, meaning just use the depth mat as is, or change it to effects and masks so that the levels we applied to the depth mat gets factored in as well. Finally, I'll just lower the blur to about 0.5 to keep it subtle. Next up, let's create another adjustment layer, rename it to levels, and then apply the wave warp effect to it. Haha, <laughs> get pranked. We're just going to apply levels to it. Here, all I'm going to do is lower the output white and then raise the input black a bit. Alright, so now things are looking pretty good, but there's still one last piece of the puzzle that will help us take it up a notch. Glows. And just like we layered fog to give a more convincing effect, we're going to layer some glows on as well. Let's make a new adjustment layer, name it Glow 1, and move it below our Lumetri layers. Next, change the glow operation to none, the glow colors to A and B, and we'll need to hide all of our adjustment layers above this so that the A and B colors we pick aren't influenced by any of the color grading. Once they're all disabled, just use the eyedropper and grab the color of the sky. Then you can get the B color quickly by just sampling the A color. And after that, just re-enable all of the adjustment layers above. Now, for this first glow layer, all we want to do is get a very subtle edge glow. So set the radius to about 30, the intensity to about 0.2, and then play with the threshold until it looks right to you. Next, I'll duplicate that glow on the same layer, increase the radius to about 50, and now we've got some pretty decent edge haze. To keep the glow active only on the parts we want, we can just make a simple feathered mask and we'll be good. Now for glows number 2 and 3. The purpose of these two glows are to emphasize the haze for things that are really tall or really far back in your scene. So make a copy of glow 1 and delete one of the glows from it. Increase the radius a bunch to like 200 and increase the intensity as well. Now I'll make a mask around the top of the fort walls and towers and increase the feather. Then just play with the threshold until you think it's good and then we'll get to our final glow. This last one is going to be for the things that we want almost completely lost in the fog, so for this example, I'll want to make the mask just the top of the main tower and maybe extend it to a bit of the other smaller towers on the right. Cranking the intensity up to 1, play with the radius and mask feather until you're happy. 
This is obviously gonna be different depending on your footage, so I can't exactly give you hard numbers here. You just gotta play with it and see what looks good. Something else worth mentioning is that if you're happy with how the intensity, threshold, and radius play off of each other, but the glow is still too strong, you can always just lower the opacity of the layer. And now our volumetric fog should be looking pretty damn cool. So now just to quickly touch on how to apply this to a video, it's pretty straightforward, but depending on your footage might be time consuming. It's really as simple as animating our depth matte masks to track to our footage as best we can. A way to make it a lot easier for yourself is to try to get a solid camera track using the built-in 3D camera tracker so that the layers you add your masks to stick to the scene pretty well and you're just making small tweaks on the mask rather than full mask animation. Now to help a little bit with that, let me just go over a few tips on how to get some good camera track data out of the 3D camera tracker. First of all, if you've got something that's moving in your scene that'll confuse the camera tracker, like a person moving in the foreground or like a car moving in your scene, duplicate your footage, draw a loose mask around what's moving, set the mask to subtract, and then animate it to keep it covered. Then when you're done, you're gonna need to pre-compose your footage before applying the 3D camera tracker to it again, but now that track won't be affected by whatever it was you're covering up. The next tip is to enable detailed analysis inside the advanced dropdown, which I'm sure a lot of you already know of. It'll take a little bit longer to track your footage, but it should give you some better overall track results. And now the last tip is if you still don't have a track you're happy with after enabling detailed analysis, you can scrub through your timeline and delete the points or groups of points that look jumpy or don't track well. After you get rid of a bunch of bad tracking points, you should have a much more accurate camera solve. Now, once you've got a decent camera track, select a couple points on or near the section you want to cover up with your depth mask, right click it and create a new camera and solid. With the track solid here, it'll be a lot easier for us to mask out what we need to since we'll just need to tweak our masks over time instead of having to do all the work manually. One thing that's extremely important to remember though is do not just scale up that solid so that it covers all the space it needs to. If you do that, then when you go to create a mask, the edge is more than likely going to be feathered and unclean since it's attached to a scaled up solid. If you need the solid to cover more screen space, instead of increasing the solid scale, we can get around that problem by going to layer, solid settings, and increasing the solid's length and width from here. A few other things to remember are that you'll want to make sure you have a copy of the 3D camera in every depth mat comp, and also make sure that your fog layers are all 3D objects. And that's it, I think. Some general last pieces of advice would be to help yourself as much as you can by trying to shoot your video with the effect in mind. Meaning if you can get away with framing your shot without seeing the ground, it's going to be easier to make your depth mats. Same with having buildings that just go out into the distance because they provide pretty easy clean lines for masks. If I were you, I'd also try to avoid trees since they're pretty hard to pull off, but if you really want them there, make sure you're helping yourself out by framing them against something like the sky to give it as much contrast as possible. One last thing that's pretty important is to film when it's overcast or not too sunny out if you can, because harsh shadows like this sort of contradict what we're going for and the shot might feel a bit off even if you didn't notice them until now. I didn't actually film this footage, otherwise I would have kept that in mind as well. This is just some stock footage that I found. And that's it. Hopefully by watching my process for making volumetric fog, it'll help you out on your own projects. And if you think of some better ways to do things, then by all means drop them in a comment down below so that I and other people can learn from you as well. Whoa, hey, you made it to the post-outro secret part of the video where I try to get you to subscribe and like it. Well, I feel like the fact that you made it this far into the video means you probably liked it, unless you were hate-watching it for this long, which would be pretty impressive, actually. In which case, yeah, even if you're hate-watching, you should still subscribe, because if you made it this far hate-watching, you're probably going to want to hate-watch all my next videos, too. And while you're at it, you should enable notifications so that you can be the first to hate-watch. Or love-watch, either one.